Hey what's up guys, welcome to my video on the unboxing of the Snapfire 8 and also a quick modification video. Uh, I've not handled a Snapfire 8 before, so uh, I'm going to take you guys through my modding process and uh, things that I encounter when I open up this Snapfire. Now before I continue, uh, yes it's available now in Singapore, I picked it up from Toys R Us, it was tipped off to me by SG Nerf. Um, I mean we all know that SG Nerf has already done his uh, internals review and uh, modifications and uh, review. Uh, and all the extensive in-depth mods and review videos and I don't know what I'm blabbering about but anyway uh, props to SGN for doing that uh, Matt props I believe that another user called Piggy um, who's uh, the amazing stock Maverick wielder, dual wielder for all the Nerf Wars that he participates in in Singapore uh, was the one that spotted this at Toys R Us and it's going for 26.90 Singapore dollars so I would say that it costs about maybe 16 or 18 USD now for the price of Nerf Blasters right now uh, Speed Load 6 is actually cheaper than this by $2 so how performance is going to be like I don't know um, these aren't really displayed like very obviously uh, in Toys R Us they just kind of shove in a small corner so you have to really look um, you can check out this video if you want to that's when I picked up the uh, Snapfire 8 it's just a quick video, you guys don't have to actually do it, just something that I wanted to just put up for fun. So anyway, I'm just going to show you the box. No, so no, dot text, that for 8. It says here, get into the game, choose your blaster, pick a jersey, vision gear, same thing, recruit your team, take down your opponents, capture their flag, uh, dot tag, dual firing modes, fast firing or long range. Yeah, um, long range is just like, what, another 10 feet, I, I guess. Snapfire 8, uh, always wear vision gear, blah blah blah. Ages 8 up, do not you know, do not aim at eyes or face, all the usual disclaimers. Get more darts. Match this image to find the right nerf refill packs. Each sold separately, dart tech dart. You know, we all don't care about that shit anyway. So, yep, so now the back of the box. The same retarded face guy that Urban Tigers had a caption contest for. So, um, Vision Gear, Competition Jersey, Equip Your Team. Okay, now, this one says, The Snapfire 8 puts customizable power in the palm of your hand. The unique Dial Force system, Dial Force system, Fire Power Selector lets you customize for fast, short range fire, or for powerful long range blasting. Load up, dial it in, and score big. And 8 Dart Tech Darts, stick to Dart Tech Jerseys, uh, sold separately for easy scoring, whistle as they fly. Uh-huh. <laughs> Trigger Force Technology, one-handed, no cocking. So I guess they're really going to call everything cocking. We nervous call it priming, but now Hasbro themselves are calling it cocking. So I don't know if I want to change my terminology to cocking. Cock the blaster. Just pull the trigger to fire. Dial for system, which is this one over here. Choose your blasting mode. Fast fire, long range. And then they have uh, images of the sharp shot, which, is the, which features the blue... Uh, dart holder area, storm fire, quick 16, speed swarm. So there's no more, uh, there's no more the speed load 6, not in this picture. So anyway, I'm gonna get my cutter and I'm gonna just do the unboxing for you guys. Here we go. I don't really know what to expect. So. It's this way. Okay. And uh, that's about it. Nothing else in the box. Put this aside. First of all, we have uh, the typical one piece of paper manual. <coughs> it's called Dart Tubes. It's not called a turret. It's called a Dart Tube. Read it. Dart Tube. <laughs> PTG Dart Tube. AirTech 2000 Dart Tube. Maverick Dart Tube. Yeah, that's enough. Firepower Selector. I thought it was called something else. Speed Dial Shit speed whatever and now they call it firepower selector make up your mind has bro um be sure to read and follow instructions carefully before using this button nah, we don't have to so to load darts um use the firepower selector there's a nice number eight over here turn the dial pull the trigger to fire uh let the trigger return all the way to the starting position to rotate the barrel and bring the next start in firing position uh, official dart tech rules like last time they used to teach you different game styles and um throw this aside <coughs> so you can see it comes packaged with um yeah dot tech dots and come on out okay so you got eight dot tech dots and now onto the blaster 
which is the main, uh, I guess, the main style of the show for today. We're going to, oh, it's plastic and paper, and they're not tying a knot anymore, they're just hooking everything in. So all you gotta do is just unhook it in a certain fashion, and it comes right out. Yeah, it's pretty nifty. I uh, guess you don't really have to use cutters anymore for this. So now this one comes out, it's twined over here. I'm just gonna rip this one apart. Like, rip! Oh, oh, I'm failing right now really badly. Okay, so nothing else here. Put it away. So here we go. Snap Fire 8. Okay, it's a little bit different from SG Nerf's version. I believe that his might be a prototype version, but let me show you why. On this side, if you take a close look, the speed and power, this knob. I remember SG Nerf's one being black. I might be wrong, but this is yellow, as you can see. And um, the knob is in orange. Hmm. I don't know, I guess I have to check his video again to double confirm. So anyway, uh, yeah. It's nice, looks like an alien blaster. It looks like a helmet of sorts. And uh, this is set to speed. So let's see. Oh, I see. So if you pull it fast, you get a loud sound like that. But if you pull it slow, you get a very muffled, air restricted sound. Uh, trigger pull is, yeah, I, I guess it is tough. Uh, I have to exert a certain amount of force and this part is really uncomfortable over here against my hand. Damn. Okay, now it's not so bad. But it's just like, you know, it's really sticky. Uh, the size of the handle is pretty good actually. Uh, clearly you guys can see that it's made in such a way that it's for adult hands. Look at my, my hands are adult hands and I can't even pull that trigger if I hook, if I hook the trigger over here, I can't even pull it all the way. It's so difficult. I gotta make sure that the trigger rests here, this part of my finger. Alright, let me try it on my weaker hand, because I'm a left hand. Alright, doesn't seem to have a problem, so now I'm gonna try and turn the dial all the way down to power. Let's just see exactly how tough it's gonna be. Alright, so now when it's maximum there, you can't turn the knob anymore. Alright, so... I guess the initial pull uh, requires a little bit more force, but once momentum kicks in, it's uh, an easy stroke. So it's, I guess it's kind of like you don't have time to hesitate before you pull the trigger. Just, just pull like that. It does take up a bit more strength though. So let's try a stock firing demo just for fun. Alright, please bear with me before I start opening up the blaster. Here we go. Just gonna load up the turrets. Da 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 da. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Seven and eight. Okay, put it all in. We're gonna turn it back up to speed. Okay. There we go. All the way up to speed setting. And we're gonna fire off just four darts. That's not too bad. <clears throat> now I'm gonna turn it all the way to power settings. I'm sorry about my throat um, having some icky phlegm in my throat and shit. So anyway, here we go. This is on power settings. Yeah, the initial velocity of the darts are relatively sign more significantly uh, significantly faster. What the hell is wrong with my English today? So yeah, anyway. Uh huh. So this is the uh, dart tag snap fire eight, and uh, yeah. Okay, so now uh, join me as I start to open up this blaster. Alright, I'm gonna change the camera angle and see you in a short while. Peace. Okay, so here we are at this particular angle again, the usual modding angle that I have in my videos, and I have the Snapfire 8 with the screwdriver, and that's all I'm gonna equip myself with for right now. Uh, I should say, actually, just in case, I'm just gonna get myself a wire cutter. Uh, I don't know what to expect when I see the internals of this blaster so that's why I'm just gonna go for the bare uh, necessities if I need anything extra I will probably have to pause the video and go get it so anyway as with all duct tech blasters 
I don't know about this part, but the first thing we'll do is just unscrew the screws on the area of the yellow piece. So make sure you get your Phillips head screwdriver and let's work the screws on this thing. So there are a total of five screws on the yellow piece, as you can see, five screw ports. And uh, <clears throat> let's see if we can pry it open. Oh yes, we can. Just pry it apart. Feels like it's made of a different plastic than what used to be used in the other duct tech blasters, and this is really thin. That's kind of crappy. So, yeah, let's see if I can remove the other side. Yes, we can. And uh, honestly, the blaster looks kind of cool this way. Uh, I might want to keep the blaster this way. <laughs> I'm not going to keep that yellow shell. see the tar rotation and everything so that's pretty cool um sg nerves one featured a set of white internals like i mentioned his might have been a prototype version i'm not so sure because his had a black um dial and i uh, i would like to correct myself i stand corrected his still has a yellow markings over here so i was wrong on that but uh, ours or the retail version will have a orange knob and black internal so now I'm gonna get into this thing I'm gonna try and open it up so I've left it one two three uh, four five six another six screws uh, see if there's anything on this side no so let's remove the screws okay I'm done and the last screw doesn't want to seem to come out so um, all these screws I'm gonna put them all together they're all of the exact same size so there's nothing to worry about whether or not you have to uh, make sure you have a certain screw size and a certain screw port nope it's all the same so now that I've gotten out all these five let me see if I can lift up the black shell oh I'm sorry I missed out one screw over here my bad my stupidity so yep lift everything up and we have the internals here you go everything looks pretty nice it's all dark and let's lift out the hole oh okay so now the shell's gone all we have is just the bare blaster itself that's how it works see squeeze the trigger and let's see how much this thing travels yep there's a maximum there too so that's what it's like eh <laughs> it looks kind of silly firing this thing like that. So anyway, you can see screws over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six screws on this thing over here on this side. And I have another one. Just one over here. Oh no, it's not even a screw. Only one over here. So all the rest of it is all here. Right, so uh, pardon me. Uh, I've got a phone call to make. So I'm going to cut this part and I'll get back to you in a short while. So see you then. Okay, I'm back. And uh, yeah, sorry I had to make a phone call so anyway uh, let's look at the trigger these little flats are made out of thin orange plastic and they seem to serve no purpose whatsoever except just providing cosmetics so you won't have a little won't have a hole over here but uh, yeah the rotation of the mech seems pretty good though check it out like quite quite fast like uh, it clicks into place and you squeeze the trigger so if you pull it really fast there isn't a chance for it to turn fast enough it's so loose you don't even feel a click sound like there's no clicking thingy at all it's just it's just so smooth I guess that loud smacking sound uh, occurs when you squeeze the trigger so fast that it's quicker than the turret rotation mech so anyway enough of that I'm gonna open up this part because I wanna see what's inside here too and I'm pretty sure that all of you are interested and dying to find out I'm gonna get all these darts and put them aside because they are in my way right and all these screws will go over here in this corner okay here we go start from the top or the front of the blaster a skeleton 
again it's the same screw size so that's a good thing let's continue and carry on so there we have six screws on this thing and uh, let's just double check and make sure that all the screws are out yep there are no more screws holding this thing in place except for this one over here but I do believe that that probably is I was right it's a trigger see I wonder if I can push it forward on my own oh, I can't I guess it only happens with the trigger so I'm gonna lift up this half of the shell right now whoa okay so again it's a very thin different feeling type of plastic and here we are uh, the real internals you've gotten into it take out this plunger tube now the whole thing is for the grease and that kind of sucks so anyway here we go here's the plunger tube itself uh, pretty short and stumpy and uh, that's the AR right there there are more okay these things aren't really ARs they are more of like dart packs and I'm gonna have to remove them but uh, the AR is here much like the uh, Swarm Fire and the Speed Swarm and I'm gonna have to find a way to remove these things this thing though it's pretty big and you can see this in itself it's pretty cool they actually put a plunger padding on this thing see check it out it's soft so stop plunger padding that's that's interesting good job Hasbro <laughs> never expected that from you guys but anyway oh man my hands are all oh sorry hit the camera my hands are all greasy and shit so I'm gonna get the wire cutters and see if I can reach onto the inside now you guys can, I don't know if you guys can see I'm sorry about the lighting and stuff uh, let me see um, camera Okay, so now you can see like uh, the air restrictor thing on the inside. Um, it's like a crosshair thingy, so there's four legs that I want to break. Let's see if I can do that right now. Yes, I can. So, okay, so I've cut it out. And uh, you shall. Okay, so that's it. That's it. Air restrictors out. I'm gonna just cut out these this piece over here for fun. Can you see it? Yeah, that thin yellow thing. So I'll just cut it uh, in this angle so you guys can see. Here you go. And the other one. Here we go. So it's a clean, clear slot all the way through. All right. And uh, now let's see if I can. Hmm remove the turret as you can see it's free spinning it's a very interesting thing free spinning and I'm gonna remove these two screws so I can get the turret out I'm gonna get this guy out though oh okay oh I see what you are doing now uh, Hasbro I see what you did there this thing is oh snap wow this is a very crazy Spring bolt. This is mad. Wow. <laughs> this is really tough. Look at that. Oh, man. Good job, Hasbro. Powerful. You guys are improving, eh? Targeting more towards teenagers, eh? You don't expect little kids to be able to wield this blaster anymore. Oh, the turret just, fall, just fell out. What is it? What was it like? Is it here? Is it here? Oh, it was here. And it was just sitting this piece right here Let's start it in. ah that's how the turret sits you don't have to remove these screws to get the turret up so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get rid of all the duct pegs so I'll just get my cutter again and slip away along with that those little dots so here you go No more dark packs in the turret. Just gotta make sure that this part doesn't have anything, doesn't have any flash sticking out. I just used my Dremel with this broken down uh, <laughs> conical sanding bit. Sorry it broke because I dropped it before. But I made the edges all smoothed out and stuff. So it's pretty smooth now. Uh, I had to wipe it down a little bit. 
uh, because of all the debris and all the fuzz and all the whatever and now it's smooth and smooth as a whistle but I have to put some lube on this thing to make sure that it doesn't cut this felt at all as you can see it's the felt it's a felt okay felt not rubber so it's very smooth it's very interesting how Nerf has actually you know uh, taken all our cues so now I'm gonna check this one out this thing over here I'm going to check the seal the seal is pretty good wow okay I'm not gonna have to do any seal improvements on this if you guys want you can do an e-tape under the o-ring thingy but I'm not gonna do it the seal is done good okay so what I'm gonna do is just gonna add more loop to this thing before I put everything back now I don't think you guys are able to do a spring addition or spring modification because it's right here <laughs> you basically pull this thing back and it tenses up this spring over here and then when you release it it just snaps it forward back again that's pretty cool it's like an arm the arm pulls this thing back now if you notice over here this knob this nub is something that will travel upwards when you pull the trigger so it reaches a certain point where you see as you, as you push it up okay I'm gonna hold this part down as you push it up it bends this part over here and in turn it pulls the uh, plunger head back and by doing so you're actually lifting this part upwards causing this spring to actually tighten up so I guess if you were to mod you have to find a extension type of spring instead of a compression based spring and this spring is really very tough one of the ways that you can improve this is to try to get this part lower or stretch it a bit more because essentially what you're doing is you're just stretching out the spring even more so let me get back to topic as you squeeze the trigger okay I don't know if you guys can see carefully I'm gonna try my best as you squeeze the trigger you pull the plunger head back like so and you can see the spring over here oops over here actually are stretching okay so that's what happens that the when you reach the top here this part will actually slip out of this notch as you, as you can see so that's when the blaster fires so let me try and show it to you guys I've got to hold everything down in place very nicely so when it reaches the top like so okay almost there and it slips out at this particular point and fires as you can see so when it comes back down it's going to hook back in place like that and then you start the whole thing all over again all right so hopefully this gives you a better insight and a better understanding of how the snap fire works so all the spring power is here it's a pretty ingenious system that you can actually pull so I guess that's the reason why you need such a long trigger pull so right at the edge of it it slips out all right uh, so now I'm gonna loop up add some extra loop and I'm gonna put everything back in place this way in right and then we're gonna lift it up here and it has to sit just here on the slip this pin has got to go inside here push it down and uh, you have to make sure that this these two parts over here they line up so that's the most important thing you have to take note of then what I'm going to do next is reinstall back the turret at the bottom here you have to make sure this part goes in here and the yellow parts sit on the lip over here right so far so good everything backs in place and I'm going to get this half of the shell like that and close her up okay we are done installing the original parts of this as you can hear the sound is significantly louder bam bam just put one dot inside here and fire it off at my monitor for fun wow okay so yep removing of the air restrictor really helps a lot with the air deliverance yep so now this is done I'm going to install back just the black shell because I think it looks cool that way so here we go this half first it's got to sit in this way like so then comes this half on top and everything should lock in place like that there we go this is my 
Modified. Oops, sorry. Modified Snapfire 8. And uh, if you guys want to reinstall back the yellow pieces, remember. Look for the word that says dot tech. Okay, it's got to be the right side up. You guys can see the word dot tech. The right side up, it'll be on the right side of the blaster. So it's going to line up like that, okay? Don't forget. So you push this one in first. And then you take the other half and you line them up. And then you slide them in place. And if you do it right, and everything goes in the respective slots, you end up with the original look. Alright, so remember to reinstall back the screws. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? But I don't want this yellow piece over here. I'm going to leave this part out. I really like the blaster in its um, half open or half closed form. So this state is my favorite state. I really think that this looks pretty cool. Black and orange. So see you guys for the final, uh, I guess, talk about this blaster. Peace. Alright, so this is just the final part to this video, this mod video, and I hope that you guys actually, you know, have benefited from watching this video if you're interested in actually modding the Snapfire 8. So now, uh, just run through quickly again one, uh, what modifications I've actually done to this thing that we've actually seen. Uh, we've gone through how to open up the blaster, uh, part by part, shell by shell, because it's a yellow shell and a black shell on this part, and uh, of course on the inside. Uh, we also remove the air restrictor and we also remove the dart packs on the uh, turret so now uh, I didn't do any modifications to the spring I didn't do anything else except for leaving the shell out the yellow, yellow part so now just one more time for the sake of this video I'm gonna set it to full speed setting and I'm gonna fire off a couple of darts alright and then I'm gonna turn it all the way down to the power setting right about there and yep so this is the modified dot tech snapfire 8 and I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video now um, I know you notice that my hair is a bit different I just came out of the shower and <laughs> while I was in the shower I had this really crazy idea it's uh, I guess you could say it's a mod it's just for shits and giggles and I wanted to share it with you guys the moment I actually performed this mod and I showed it to my brother, we just burst out laughing like two fools. So, I'm going to just hide it from under the camera and do this really quick for you guys. Now I can officially say pew pew pew. For those of you who actually know <laughs> what Earthworm Jim is, <laughs> just put on a stick and a ball, which is actually a recycled foam ball from... Uh, one of the other Nerf Blasts. Actually, in fact, this is the Leonard uh, Ball Blaster 2 ball, Balls. Pew, pew, pew. Check it out. It's Earthworm Jim's Blaster. If you guys don't know what Earthworm Jim's Blaster looks like, okay, yeah, all I gotta do is just give it a spiffy red paint job and, well, see, the resemblance is uncanny. Of course, if you guys know what a Marshmallow m Forcer is, that looks like the Earthworm Jim Blaster 2, but this <laughs> just cracks me up so yeah all I did was just uh, get a stick uh, shove it into the ball put it some e-tape inside it it just sits right there so I think this is a pretty cute retarded and stupid cosmetic mod and I hope that you guys are laughing along with me thanks for watching guys uh, and I hope you like the unboxing stay tuned for my next video it should be another mod video peace pew pew pew